Kanoku, which before earlier this week, the only thing I knew about Nakanoku was ice cream. That's all I know. Um, well, and now I know more because I did some research online, but I, I found out a little bit, but I really feel like Nakanoku, I'm not going to know much about it, and it's going to be a big surprise, and it already has been. The drums that we just heard were spectacular. It was such a great way to start this morning of this unknown area that we've never been to. We're just one stop outside of Shinjuku on a rapid train on the Chuo line, and everything has kind of gone from really big to kind of small. Feels a little miniature here. Um, Nakano is mainly like a residential area. This whole ward is mainly where people commute into more central Tokyo to go to jobs and things like that. So it's mainly where people live and people come just to be here as opposed to in the busy city. So I don't really know what to expect from this. Is it going to be humdrum or is it going to be amazing because so far I'm already blown away by the drums. I feel like we got here and the drums were just like you are in Nakano! <laughs> so I think Nakano is going to be pretty good even though I know nothing about it so far. <laughs> mochi-making festival that's happening here at Nakano Station. Um, you, you can be sure that I want to get involved in this mochi-making for show. Uh, they have like these gigantic hammers, so I got in line and I got to hold the hammer. The hammer is intensely heavy, like, well, maybe not intensely heavy, but it's, it's really heavy. Uh, there's little kids that got in line with me, like super cute, waiting with their little mochi hammers, and that was just you're done. That's adorable to the max for the day. If I find something more adorable than that, I will let you know, but I don't think that I will. Um, the mochi is just a really interesting... It feels ancient, but I think this is... We know this isn't how they're doing it anymore, so it, it's, it's kind of like the ancient practice, but it's still very cool, like churning butter when you go to some pilgrim village or something like that. That's what the equivalent of this. Um, Behind where we were banging out all the mochi, they have like these really big rice cookers that they're steaming the rice in. And I think that they kind of over um, steam the rice so that the rice is really, really fat and kind of juicy. And then once they plop it into the banger area, I don't really know what we're going to call that. This is the <laughs> banger area. When they drop it in there, you can kind of just tell that it's already ready to squish into each other. It's, it's past the point of singularity, or it, it's ready to become one big thing once they put it in there. And then these two guys rolled around, and they, they kind of looked like they were rowing a boat, but they were going in the wrong direction. So they're kind of squishing it together, getting it ready for everyone. And then, I mean, they got the master, the little girl got in there, and I mean, she took it down. <laughs> and then I came and I probably did nothing. <laughs> the, uh, the men that I saw were swinging it much harder than I was swinging it. It's really warm. <laughs> I think I'm used. To, I think I'm used to having mochi that has flavor in it. So this is like plain mochi, and it feels really hearty and not like a sweet like you would you normally think about it. Like this actually feels like a food as opposed to something that's just gonna make me big. And it's good. It smells like cream of wheat. Directly outside of the Nakano uh, train station is one of those covered walkway, like not shopping mall, but kind of shopping mall places that are in like every city in Japan. And we are now in search of breakfast because you know how we are, like we haven't eaten yet. And it's like 10, 10 30 or something. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot this camera down, man. I'm hungry. <laughs> Hey, 
You got the goods? I am happy about this. Let's check All this right. out. Alright. Come to McDonald's. <laughs> Uh, but the reason we came to McDonald's is because while it's January right now, um, and it is a little bit cold, it's not its not as cold as it usually is this year, I think it's El Nino or whatever is keeping things kind of a reasonable temperature, so um, we're able to go out and actually shoot stuff without freezing to death. But it's cold enough where I don't want to stand outside on the street and eat the um, pastries we just got, so we've come to McDonald's and Katie has uh, got a coffee. So the, we paid our admission to sit here and eat a breakfast from someplace else inside of McDonald's. And like, check this out, check this out. Look at this little hole I'm in. <laughs> like, I sit, but just barely. My elbows are like jammed against the wall as I sit up straight. <laughs> this is like Japan stuff, man. So we got three pastries that I think are going to be kind of interesting. These pastries they individually and wrapped every wow. Yeah, this kind of reminds me of uh, two days ago or whatever we made that video about um, the pizza mons. And this reminds me of that layout, remember? Mm -hmm. Do we have the tuck? No tuck. No tuck. This lady's a monster. <laughs> okay. So um, this one is for dessert. We're going to keep that one for dessert. Ooh. This one is for Katie. And we're going to keep that one for Katie. And this one is for me. <clears throat> so, wow. Look at that. It's like a piece of bread and it's got bacon on it and an egg and a little bit of pepper, I guess. And it looks pretty delicious. That's um, an egg McMuffin if I've ever yeah, seen it's one. An egg, an egg McMuffin. The only thing about this is it's cold. So I wonder, like, are you supposed to take this home and heat it up? Am I just, am I doing this wrong? Like, it's clearly been cooked, but, you know, it's cold. <laughs> or, uh, is the egg muffin supposed to be chili? What do you think this is? Just cheese? Hmm? Looks like cheese. Yeah, that could be cheese. No. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it tastes like a classy egg muffin, like straight up. Kind of healthy. The cheese is like a real cheese too. It's not like McDonald's like fake cheese. Um, wow. Yeah, the ham on it is good. Maybe there's a little bit of mayonnaise in there or something. Or it could be the cheese that's tricking my tongue. But I'm very impressed. It's a little bit expensive. This was a lot more money than an egg McMuffin. It was like 200 yen or something. Um, and an egg McMuffin is like how much do you know? Like 100 yen? 100. 20 yen or something? Yeah. Um, But this is like, yeah, this is like kind of a high quality thing. I'm impressed with this little guy. I'm interested in what you got too. It's like a curry thing or something? Yeah, it said beef stew curry. And it's got kind of an empanada feel where like they've put it in and then they've sealed it up. And it's soft, I can push it down quite far. So I feel like it's not filled to the brim or anything. It's probably also supposed to be warm. You can see the stew inside. Mm. There's some cheese. I'd say it's not the best tasting flavor in the world because my brain was thinking beef stew and curry and when you mix the two I guess it just comes you don't get the power of either of them it's all right not the best thing in the world but uh the outside is very nice and it's a good start so the bakery nailed the bread but kind of the insides is I mean I don't know bakery well, isn't really known I for be expecting yeah <laughs> Nail the bread and just give you something interesting on the inside. Mm. It's okay. I think it's a good start to the day. Whoa. Okay, this is surprisingly heavy. And um, <laughs> it's it huge. Says, yeah, it's huge. <laughs> um, it's a uh, maple melon. So it's melon bread that has some sort of maple syrup. Do you know why it's called melon bread? No. Just because it's big like a melon. And sometimes oh, they'll put yeah. like a texture onto it that mm -hmm. makes it look even more like a melon. More melon. When we first moved here, I was like, why are they making melon flavored bread? Is 
that where they got the word, the name Melanie from? Melanie. I just said Melanie and it was like, <laughs> it was weird, okay. But anyway, when we first moved here, I used to be like, what's the deal? Like, are they making melon flavored bread all the time? But it has nothing to do with the flavor, it's just a shape. I'm jumping in. Okay. I expect that to be really sweet. Oh my god. It's just oozing out of it. It doesn't make any sense. Like, you know how trees have sap and it comes out and you're just like, what? What, what are you doing, tree? That's what's happening here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. I don't even understand how that's possible. Is it like ma maple, maple syrup? Mm -hmm. One of the most delicious things I've probably had in my life. I'm gonna <laughs> gonna nail that down right now. They said it was the number one most popular item at the bakery. But it wasn't sold out like the other stuff. We, we had originally gone in there to get one of these that was curry and it was completely sold out. I guess people like meat in the morning but I like maple in the morning. <laughs> wow. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Today is a Monday and it, uh, I'm not at work. It's a national holiday. It's coming of age day. You can see these pretty girls behind me. They're in their kimonos. And there's another one coming past in front of me. Um, these girls and boys are turning 20 today, I believe. And um, it's their day that they're becoming an adult. And I was just standing outside of Starbucks and Starbucks, there were two people outside and they were holding what looked like freebies. So, I mean, I went up to them and they basically told me that these are not for you. <laughs> They're for the people who are coming of age today. So the people that are celebrating wearing their kimonos and going outside and saying, hey world, I'm an adult, bring it. Welcome to the real world. You're gonna have a wonderful time, guys. <laughs> To clarify, they're not all turning 20 today. They're turning 20 this year, I guess. And then everybody that turns 20 this year celebrates their coming of age day today. I think, I think that's how this works. Because otherwise, I don't think everybody in Japan is born the same day. <laughs> I, I think that is really cool because it, 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 I remember when I celebrated my 21st birthday and I hung out with my friends, but this is like you get to hang out with the whole country that's doing that with you this year. And I think it's cool to see other people that are at the same stage of life as you. And even though you don't know each other, you're kind of going through the same moment. And that's, that's really fun. And you get free Starbucks. I got denied. <laughs> Should have <laughs> told them I was 20. Oh uh, yeah, I don't think they would have fallen for it. What, are you trying to call me old? Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's harsh. The covered walkway that we were walking down earlier leads to what can best be described as an otaku mall. It is where people who are really, really intense about their hobbies, otaku, um, they come here and there's many different stores for different varieties of hobbies that people might have, like figurines or collecting AKB48 cards or tons of other things. I, I don't even know how far the otaku world goes. And I didn't know that Nakano had any sort of otaku culture, but that's kind of one of the biggest things about Nakano. Like the whole ward, this is the thing that you'll find on the internet about this place. The whole ward is just about otaku. So we're gonna go inside and find out what's going on in there. This place is like an explosion. I feel at home. You do? You do. This yeah. isn't what our place looks I like at all. This. Well, I, this is what my brain looks like. <laughs> it's just, they've just taped things to the thing to display them. That, like, that's my brain. It's just a bunch of post-its. <laughs> this little toy store is like an overload of like, just stuff like hanging off the walls and off the ceilings and in glass cases. And there's dudes like at the front of the store talking with the shopkeep about, they have like this book. And in the book is a bunch of like little like pictures from TV shows or something from like way back in the day and they're talking about like how amazing the stories were that were on these TV shows from when they were kids and stuff. So I think like if you're a Japanese person that's like maybe our age, like in your 30s or something, and you go in here, this place is like a nostalgia explosion. Like if everything from your childhood like has been compacted into this one tiny little room. <laughs> Obviously, like pretty much tons of other places in the world, Star Wars is a huge thing. Here in Japan, it's 
enormous, and outside of bookstores and other stores, they're just trying to grab people's eye to get them to come into their store, and outside this bookstore they've got a huge stand of just random Star Wars things. It is very big here. <laughs> I like how they're using like these cute little animations for like, I mean, Darth Vader's evil, right? And then like, he's just out for some ice cream or like, they're just having a tea party with Darth Vader and he's just playing with the kids up in here. It's really funny how they presented this with like, you know, the character of Darth Vader isn't quite like that. And they also have got a bunch of books that are like learning English with Star Wars type stuff or like books that explain specific phrases in Star Wars and then you can like study from them or whatever. Pocket flashcards, I didn't even notice that, that's funny. So, oh look at that. So you can just like take and cut them up and then you're learning English with Darth Vader, y'all. One of the big stores that you would expect to be in the otaku area here in Nakano Broadway is Mandrake. Uh, it's a huge powerhouse of manga. As you can see, the people that are standing behind me have just come and they're looking at books outside of the store. They're not stealing, also, which we love, um, but they're just standing outside reading manga and that's what Mandrake's kind of known for. But what I like to go into Mandrake to do, which I don't do it very often, but I like to go in and look at all the figurines that they have inside because they do more than just like your typical manga. They also have Barbie and that's just... <laughs> That's what I'm up for. If the, if the Barbie that I saw wasn't $300 or like a little bit under that, we probably would have bought it. I, think I was willing to spend $250, but they went a little too high on that. I... <sighs> Disappointed. We keep using the word otaku, and it sort of has got like, honestly, if you say that to like a lot of people, they kind of get like, oh, it's got kind of like a stinky nerd vibe to it to some people, but when you really break it down and like really want to get the meaning of it it really just means people that are interested in specific things it's just some people take it too far the same way some people in the states like are basement dwellers that live in their mom's basement and just play warcraft or whatever like that same thing happens here but there's also like the middle ground where it's just like your hobby or whatever so when we say otaku shop usually what that really means is specialty shop like a shop that deals with one thing like that old school toys or manga or the shop behind me is a watch shop. So I mean like, somebody that's like really into watches, I mean you would never think, oh like greasy gross person, you'd just be like dudes into watches, right? So it sort of is a broad reaching term. And it, it's weird because they've clustered like five of these watch shops together, and it's like the little watch shop corner. So I guess if you're really into watches, you should come here because there's a lot to offer. Just like the little kids that we saw with the big hammers being the cutest thing, um, for today, the creepiest thing might be this shop that is uh, specializing in dolls. And I saw this display and I was like, gosh, that's a little weird. That's just too much random naked dolls. I don't know. But then I went inside and they have a huge amount of make your own doll stuff. Like just heads with no eyes and no hair and stuff. And you can choose which head is the best one for your doll. And then there's eyes just sitting around so you can choose which eyes you want. and. You can just make it from scratch, and it's really it's high on the creep meter. And I just realized this is an example of a finished doll, and the finished doll doesn't look creepy. It actually looks kind of cool and modern. Here's a weird one. So the way that in America, sometimes you have people that are like really into Japanese stuff, and like, you know, they have like manga and stuff, and that's all they talk about. They're like the, with the wee weeaboos, I guess is the word for it. I guess there's a little bit of that that's in the reverse, because some of these shops specialize in like American stuff, like the Simpsons t-shirts, or uh, Transformers, or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Seems like it's actually quite popular. I've seen this quite a bit. And like, this comes up a level. You can come over here. You can bust out the entire Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles suit. Like, you, <laughs> you get the whole guy. And then there's a uh, Don't Have a Cow shirt. I actually kind of want this. <laughs> One thing that people might not know, and maybe I don't realize that this is big in the world, but darts bars exist here where the activity that you go to the bar to do is to play darts. 
Um, some of them will have pool halls with them as well, but there are ones that are just for darts. And this is Dart Otaku. And you can go into this shop and buy a barrage of different tips for your darts, different tails, I'm going to call them tails for your darts. And when I was little, my dad had a dart board and we had a lot of different pieces, so I can actually go into this one and understand a little bit of the otaku, which is kind of cool. I understand the bits and pieces, how they go together and playing the game, so I kind of, I like this one. <laughs> I think maybe the reason that like a darts bar would be popular in Tokyo is because of how small the bars are. Like it's really kind of difficult to have a building big enough to hold a pool table, but for like a dart board all you need is kind of like a narrow little hallway and that is kind of what a lot of the bars here are. So maybe that's why the popularity took off. So what was inside Mandrake Deep? Oh, that's the name of the store. Eric just told me to go in there, so I went in there. Um, there's a lot of anime that's inappropriate for all ages. <laughs> and there's some anime that's inappropriate for my age of deepness. <laughs> okay. In the basement of this um, gigantic otaku mall, there are some eateries, sort of. Like, it's like a counter you can stand at and get food on. And there's also like like grocery stores and stuff. And, like there's a guy yelling behind us about vegetables and stuff. We were walking past this stuff, and I I noticed that the udon was kind of strange. And what they've done is they've made a udon that's kind of based off of a pasta. And how do you say it? Carbonara. Carbonara. Okay, carbonara. Carbonara pasta. And uh, it's got um, it's got udon noodles. And then there is egg in here that is like half cooked egg. And there is cream cheese apparently and pieces of bacon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix this whole thing up and it says you can add salt and pepper at your leisure. So let's stir this up. And this was, this was cheap, this was like 390 yen which is like three bucks or something like that. There you go, there's the cream cheese. Wow wild. So let me throw some salt and pepper on this too. I know it's at least going to need pepper. So they bring you these little uh, <laughs> these little guys and you don't want to overdo it. Pepper you can overdo, it's okay. Salt is scary though, right? So there we go. Oh, pepper. Salt. <laughs> and then I'm going to go really light on the salt. I don't really like salt. That was more salt than I wanted. <laughs> you okay. ruined it. I did, I ruined it. Okay. So let's stir this up a little bit more. And it is served warm. Um, the bowl is pretty, I wouldn't say hot, but it's warm enough that that cream cheese stuff is melting, which is good. It's almost like a butter consistency now. Wild. Okay, I'll give it a taste now. I don't know if it's mixed enough. Mix but more, mix more. You think mix more? Yeah, mix a lot more. You kind of want to make it a sauce as opposed to cream cheese and egg by itself. Mm. So mix and mix and mix, go crazy. It's looking pretty good now. You think? Yeah. All right. So, looks like I'm just getting a noodle down here right now. Yeah, it tastes like Italian food. <laughs> it tastes like Japanese Italian food with udon noodles, which is kind of strange because you would expect like a spaghetti sized noodle or, you know, a uh, a fusilli or something like that. Those are all the noodles I know. <laughs> and you'd expect that type of texture, but with that big thick udon noodle. It's pretty good for for three and a half bucks or whatever. Like that's a fairly good meal. It's pretty creamy that um, the cream sauce or the, the cream cheese dissolving into it has made it surprisingly creamy. I never really thought cream cheese was what you would use to make like a white sauce based pasta, but I mean, I don't, I'm not Italian, what do I know? <laughs> Let's see with the bacon. I'd get this again. It's all right. I told you, we came for ice cream. <laughs> all the ice cream. This is huge. Um, I don't really know how more to say other than I saw this picture and that is why the wards videos began.
because I wanted to do this. Um, this place is called uh, Deli Chico, I think, and it's famous for its soft serve ice cream. Strawberry is really good. Um, we have strawberry, chocolate, vanilla, I believe this is caramel. Could be goma. Caramel. Yeah, matcha. Uh, matcha. Goma. That's uh, gonna be goma. Durian. Oh, no. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no, that's caramel. Who's this? Coffee? Was coffee one of them? I don't know. That's my least favorite. Oh. What fizzy candy is how they translated it. <laughs> like bubble gum. We don't have very long to eat this, so... What's the bottom one? Oh wait, that was the bottom one. Mm -hmm. So we just have this one mystery flavor. Yeah, let's find out. <laughs> oh, cafe au lait. So yeah, coffee. You need that whole thing on your own? Yes. <laughs> you have a spoon, I'm pretty sure you're I got two spoons, it. we need a third person. <laughs> <laughs> we might need a fourth person, I don't know. <gasps> It's like a time bomb. Like this ice cream is like ticking down. It's pretty, pretty chilly in here, but it's starting to melt. And like, we kind of like the stuff in the middle more than the top. So like, we have this problem where it's like, like leaning tower, leaning tower pizzaing, and like, I just foresee an issue. So, fall. Oh. I'm waiting for the brain freeze. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. I talked you into this, and I know you weren't thinking about that brain freeze at all, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what do I do? Oh, poor, poor you. Oh, that's gonna get dangerous. You gotta stop before the cider because it tastes like ass. I think sometimes when you see things like this giant ice cream cone that's all colorful and everything, you think like, you know, oh, it looks really cool, but is it really going to be that good? Like, maybe it's just the novelty for the appearance or whatever. But this is actually pretty legit soft serve ice cream. It's not like icy or anything. It's like just pure flavor. It's not like that. Well, you know, when they when they when they make it wrong, it's like kind of chunky and stuff. It's really smooth, and I'm really surprised at how good this is. Um, and I think what was it called? It cost 400 and 400 ABM. So that's like four bucks, mm. which is for the novelty and the flavor and the size. Quite a surprise at how cheap that is. What's your favorite flavor? My favorite flavor of this one? Mm. A lot of them are really good. The Goma is really good, I think. Yeah, the Goma is just a surprising flavor to get. Um, and then I like the, uh, the fizzing candies. The fizzing candies. Wait, you hate that, but I don't know, man. It's just a thing I like. Cafe au lait, that's where it's at. Yeah. That was a popper. Even though I didn't know what it was when I first had it, when I realized what it was, I was like, that is just on point. That's perfect. I didn't have much of the strawberry or the chocolate or the vanilla, <laughs> which you have eliminated. But uh, they were all like your typical, I mean, strawberry to me is a waste of ice cream. Waste. So I was glad you ate that one. But when I noticed that all the chocolate was gone, I was a bit disappointed. <laughs> I thought that when I got close to the end of it, I'd be like, oh God, thank God it's over. But I'm kind of sad. Like all those flavors were really amazing and now it's almost over. And I'm kind of sad. You can get another one. No, I physically <laughs> probably can't get another Come one. Come on, man, do a bang bang. Not with that cider, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that Nakano Broadway existed until we were on the train on our way here today and Katie was like, yeah, there's this area that's kind of like otaku-y stuff. I was like, okay. So in my head, I'm thinking Akihabara. And I think what it actually ends up being is, dare I say, maybe a little bit better than Akihabara in some ways, because Akihabara is like the place that everybody goes to. And by everybody, I mean tourists. So it's like nothing but tourists and tourists and tourists, which is fine. I mean, that's what its jib is. But because of that, a lot of the shops that are there are like big name brand shops or like chains and stuff and they don't tend to have like as much of the like little obscure little like it, it, obscure little items and interesting atmospheres and stuff that we found when we were in here so maybe this is what Akihabara felt like like 20 years ago or something 
where it was where like local people that were interested in, in these niche things would go and actually do shopping. I would definitely come back here and check it out. Um, the only thing that I found that was a little bit of a bummer compared to Akihabara is I'm really into video games. That's like my otaku thing. Like if I'm an otaku, I'm a video game otaku. And there were a couple of places. There was like one game center in there or arcade in there. And there was one or two places that sold used games. But it wasn't like in Akihabara where there's like tons and tons of those places. So that did seem to be missing. But just something about the atmosphere in there was just more authentic it was more real and it's just like like I, there was no it was like hardly any tourists it was like us it was, there was like five white people in there total like including us and sometimes that's a good sign walking past a little uh, stand and they have um yakitori so uh some chicken on a stick yeah and um i got the negi jams so there is leek and uh chicken and one of them is salt, and one of them is soy sauce flavored. And um, I got to, you know, you get to watch the dude warm them up on this little grill. And um, his shop was a little bit like, needed a scrub. But in, in, in my view, like a shop that needs a scrub usually is a good sign. Like you don't want a clean shop making this stuff. You want this place to be grungy. You want this guy's focus on his chicken. You don't want him focusing on the bleach, you know? So uh, let's see, which one should I have first? What do you think? Soy sauce. Soy sauce? Mmm, yeah, it's almost like his soy sauce mixture is almost a teriyaki. Like when I was a kid in America and I would go to like a Japanese restaurant, my parents would have sushi or whatever, I would get teriyaki chicken. That's like a dead ringer for it. That was damn good. All right, soft flavor. Also good. It doesn't like tie me back to my childhood, but it's a pretty good flavor. I also like to point out, I'm walking down the street, just munching on some chicken. This is so, like, foreigner right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is, like, making a video and everything. We look ridiculous right now. It's all good. My stomach hurts from all the ice cream. Throughout Nakano, and I'm going to start calling it what I think of it in my head. The shape of the actual ward makes me, it looks a little bit like in like Africa to me. So I'm going to start calling it Little Africa, okay? <laughs> I just want to call it Little Africa so bad. All right, so here in Little Africa, um, there's really only like one temple that has any internet chatter about it <laughs> um, and that is by Shoin which is where we are right now and I love the way that the internet put this it said 51 weeks of the year this this temple is nothing but one week a year it has a huge cherry blossom festival which is that that is significant of many other places in Tokyo and throughout Japan um, but we've come to the temple that has no significance right now and we're just wandering around. Uh, there's a definitely some cool things. Uh, the temple itself just has a real pure Japanese vibe. And there are a lot of people here today, which was a little surprising, but then I realized that this is the only temple that's boasted about for Little Africa. This is its mecca. People are coming here. <laughs> <laughs> it really sounded like a fart. <laughs> uh, we were just over by the temple and we decided we'd go kind of out a different way than what we came in and we happened upon this lovely little statue here. I don't really know anything about it, but it does look lovely. But my favorite thing that's happening in this area is the trombone that's happening in the background. There's just a man and we're under the assumption that he's practicing and maybe the area that he's standing has really good acoustics, but there's something so charming about that. You just come into this area and somebody is doing something musical and not for any reason other than to get better at it. And it brings an ambiance to this temple that wouldn't have existed without him and I, I was really happy about that. We've wandered into this little park and I say little and I'm wrong because it's kind of big. We've wandered into this kind of big park and um, apparently it's like the park and the ward I guess and we've just kind of stumbled across the statues of what I'm going to say are important religious figures from different religions around the world. 
And this is something I am very not versed in. So um, the way that I figured this out is kind of the vibe they have feels a little, you know, religious-y. But one of them has got, um, it says uh, Jesus' name, like in Japanese over here. And then the other one says um, Abraham's name on the other side. So then I was like, well, I'm assuming the rest of these people that I don't recognize are probably religious leaders from different like denominations of religion that I don't know anything about. But this is not something you normally see in Japan, so it kind of sticks out a little bit, but kind of in a cool way. It's very well done. Well, I don't see any, I don't know why it's here. Like if there's a significance to this area or something that I'm, I'm unclear about. There is a sign over here that says there's a giant river that flows underneath this park into some sort of lake or something. But I don't know, maybe somehow that has something to do with this? I don't know. I'm a bit confused. Maybe it's just religion otaku. That's what it is. Where <laughs> we found the religion otaku place. <laughs> We discovered the park's name and it is Tetsudaku Nani? <laughs> Tetsudaku Do, right? Yep. Tetsudaku Do Koen. And um, it's kind of weird. Like the buildings in here are kind of Japanese like style, but kind of like decrepit feeling. Like a little bit run down in a way that isn't usually common for, for buildings like this. But at the same time, you also don't usually see buildings like this inside of a park so it's just a kind of a mixture of things like it almost feels like a shrine that hasn't quite been kept up but in a park and it just doesn't really i can't remember seeing anything like this in the past it's like similar to this so we've got like this big red building here and it's like a lighthouse or something like a japanese lighthouse where there's no water nearby <laughs> it's on top of a hill and I don't, I don't think there's a light in there. So it's just, you know, the building is here for whatever particular reason that we don't understand. And then there's some other buildings that almost have like a, a tomb feel. Maybe I feel that way just because we were just in the Philippines and there were, we saw a lot of tombs and stuff there. So maybe that's just fresh in my mind. But it definitely has got a feel that I just didn't expect to find in the middle of a park where there's people like playing tennis and throwing around a baseball and stuff. I ain't no flower scientist or nothing, but uh, it's January and these flowers are flowering. So, is that just more proof of the El Nino? I think the El Nino is causing all sorts of crazy things happening this year. And um, apparently this is an ume tree. And we think that usually is a thing that blooms in the spring. But, you know, January. Is this tree confused? I was under the impression that Nakano was uh, going to be quite residential. And I think that is the fact for most places outside of Nakano Station. Mostly residential. The buildings have gotten a lot smaller. They just look like apartments and obviously shops underneath and the other uh, facilities you'd need to make your life. But other than that, it just feels very, very residential. So I don't see us like expanding out very far to just see more residential area when that's what this is. People come to live here to get away from the craziness that is Tokyo. We're going inside. I don't know if I'm gonna fit, dude. <laughs> down on your knees. <laughs> oh, this is good. Wow. You're you're ready to worship. Could I sit? Do you think and it would maybe fit? We could just chop off your legs, get you a skateboard. <laughs> chop off the legs here, maybe. Yep. Like all the legs, not the knee. What's going on in here? Got a little shrine. Shrine stuffs. I really love our little GPS app. It shows like all these little areas that are obviously not for cars, but that you could walk through them and it shows them as little paths. So we found this little guy. As 
we're heading to our next destination, we've walked through all this residential area for the living, and now we've ended up in this residential area for the dead. So we're actually in a Japanese cemetery, and everyone is so close to each other, and the graves are so small that it feels quite crowded in this area. And I also am interested in seeing the dates. Like, dates is a big thing on American graves, and we actually can't see any dates in here, so we don't know how old anyone is or how long ago they died, which that information, oddly, is important to me. And another thing that we're seeing are a lot of fresh flowers. There, there's quite many around, and does seem like a good number of people came today. I wonder if the holiday plays any part in that, like people have more free time or something other than that. But I have found one of my new favorite flowers. I don't know what this is, but it is amazing. Is it firm? Yeah, it's a little firm. It's not puffy like you would expect. Yeah, that poof, it's a good poof. Okay, just a micro KD experience. So we came out of the cemetery that we were just in and we came over to this area called Mejidera. And I saw pictures of it online and was like, eh, it's a lot of statues, could be kind of interesting. I did not expect all the statues. Oh my gosh, there's so many in here. And when we walked in, we saw a gate and the gate was locked. So I was like, okay, we won't get to go in, but we can at least see them from behind the gate. That's still cool. But I told myself, no, keep walking around. So I kept walking around and I saw another gate and it was locked and I was like, okay. And then, but then I found a gate and the gate was unlocked. Now the gate has a little bell and the sign says, please use the bell when you enter. So come on in. I kind of felt like the bell Sorry. I kind of felt like the bell announced your presence to all of the statues. And I, I started just looking around and feeling like they're all there and they know you're there. And that was a little bit of an experience to have. And then I thought about how Eric had said that things were very crowded. And I started to feel that crowd. Like the crowd is just sitting there and you're here and you've caught their attention with that bell and I don't know why but I, I just felt in that moment and I wanted to express that somehow. Uh, the other part of that experience is that it smells very very floral in here like roses. So yeah, I had a very good moment and I somehow shared that I think. <laughs> We found something very interesting, and I think it might be marijuana. Where'd you learn that? Drug school. <laughs> it's not. It's totally not. Um, we're standing outside of what can only be described as a spice otaku shop. And we're just walking down the street randomly looking for dinner at this point, trying to find something cool. And I've never seen anything like this. It's just spices on spices on spices of all different kinds and teas and things like that and they're just sitting outside in the street the inside of the shop is just a small alcove that kind of looks like a medicinal like a pharmacy almost it's like, got a, it's got a chinese spice vibe one of those got shops a chinese spice but vibe. in the bags hanging outside is unique yeah it, it's just very cool I want to buy something, but I don't understand this enough to buy anything. Cinnamon, dude. It's well, like I a pound can... of cinnamon over there. What are you gonna, what are... I'm not doing the cinnamon challenge, all right? <laughs> no way. We tried to find something like uh, uh, only in this area, and we found something kind of only in this area. Um, so on the internet, there's this website that works like, oh, what's the American version of this called? Yelp. Yelp. Is that what it's Yelp? Mm -hmm. Where you can look up restaurant reviews and stuff. So they have one of those things here that's called Taba Dog. And um, Katie's become like a genius with this website. So um, we sat outside. We don't have internet on our phones or anything. So we just stood outside of a convenience store and used the free internet there like we always do. And um, I searched for like the best restaurants in the area and it gave me a list of a hundred of them and this one fell somewhere in the like top 20 or something. And it is a curry restaurant. And it's not like um, curry, like Indian style curry, but it's like 
they, they, they build themselves as Asian style curry. So it's served not with naan, but with rice instead. So it's curry rice. But they do some kind of interesting dishes. And we saw some of the pictures and we were like, oh, that looks like, that looks like something we should check out. So we came over here and it's kind of like down a little alleyway a little bit and um, has a pretty cool little atmosphere. And, and smell. Yeah, and when you walk in, it, the smell is like overwhelmingly good. Like coconut milk. Coconut milk and spices and stuff. Like it, smell, it smells like somebody would be doing some cooking. And um, the prices are all right. Like it's less than a thousand yen. So like, you know, it's like eight bucks or something for, for a meal. So I ordered their special. And their special is a um, shrimp and avocado curry. And it comes out like this. And if you see this ledge here, this is actually the rice. Um, and you can see there's, there's shrimp in there and everything. And I mean, that's, for, a, that's a good shrimp. For the price, man. Like, that seems all right. So she asked what spice level we wanted. And I told her the spice level was going to be, like, normal. So it's not going to hopefully kill me. Japanese spice isn't super spicy anyways, usually. <laughs> Those are the words of a man that might just die. <laughs> I've seen you cry from spice before. I ordered way spicier than that, so I'm scared now. The spice is... No, I said the same. The spice is in the back of the throat. The flavor is good. The shrimp is good. Let's check that rice out a little bit more. The presentation of this meal is really good, too. It just looks amazing. It looks like gourmet, like, you know, like... And usually I'm afraid of coming in places that look kind of like... They might be run by art students because I think a lot of times, like they worry about the way the place looks more than the food. But this is they've had a, they've had a pretty good they paid quite a bit of attention to the way the food tastes. It tastes like full and real. Yeah, that's really good. I want to try. Oh, but I only had half the dish. I didn't get any avocados. So I'm impressed. For, I'm really impressed for the price of this. Like, I can't believe this was as cheap as it was with the shrimp and the avocado and the quality and everything. Yeah. And Katie got something else. I don't know. You got something that looks similar, but not um, similar. Yeah, the color is the same. But I went with a uh, tomato, spinach, and cheese curry. So I'm really getting into hot tomatoes lately. I don't know. There's <laughs> something about hot tomatoes. Um, Oh, a snap. Wow, it is cheesy beyond belief. I am stunned at that. Okay, the cheese is out of control, everyone. <laughs> that cheese is gonna hold heat, too. You be careful. It has kind of a tom yum kind of taste to it. Mm -hmm. A red spicy and it's definitely got a coconut milk base and a lot of cheese. I didn't really get any tomato. I think it's, I've never seen any like Thai food cross with cheese before though. I think that's not a thing that tends to happen. Cheese goes good with everything. It does. Mm. You're right. Cheese was the bacon before bacon was the bacon. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Just outside of Yami Yami Curry, where we had dinner, these amazing little streets that are very Kyoto, Izakaya area-esque are just <laughs> amazing looking and fun and kind of nostalgic for what happened. Like, can, you, can it be nostalgic if it was last month? I think so, but it's really cool. I, I want to find something in here, but I'm not hungry in the least anymore, so I feel like we're going to miss out on going in somewhere, but yeah, the stroll's going to be good. <laughs> so what did you think of Nakano? What did I think of Nakano? Nakano's awesome. I was really surprised. Like, when you said this morning that, like, there's not much here or whatever, I was like, okay, it's going to be kind of like, meh. what happened on the light? <laughs> it's going to be kind of like, meh. But then, like, um... There was, right around the train station is, is awesome. Let's put it that way. Like, you should come to Nakano Eki and like walk around this area 
and especially the northern side seemed to be like where everything was bumping, where the, all the otaku mall stuff was and a lot of food and we just walked through that bar area after we had dinner and it was awesome. I want to come back there and just explore, I want to explore the otaku mall more, I want to explore the, that, that, that place after at night time like the, the, the bar area, the izakaya area and stuff, like all that I really want to check out more. But I am curious if like, are there things somewhere like away from the train station? Is there something big we missed here that we don't know about? You know, like, I don't know. I do, I do feel like that's a definite because I feel like there could have been, there's, there's, there's areas away from this station and I do feel like we got quite a considerable distance from the station, but I mean, we didn't check out all of Little Africa, so. There, there must be more around here, but maybe it's just people's houses. If you know something that's amazing over here, let us know. We'd be happy to come back. Totally happy. Yeah, I, I will definitely come back anyways. This is all of like 10 minutes from where we live, so it's not like it's like a big deal. Like, I, I chose this because it was unknown, completely unknown. The last ward video we did was Minatoku, and I know too much about Minatoku, so it was kind of like it was too easy, but for this one, I wanted to do it because we knew literally nothing about it, and that was really exciting to me. Um, I also chose it because it didn't seem overwhelming in size. Some of these uh, wards are gigantic, but Little Africa is little for a reason. <laughs> and uh, ice cream, obviously. <laughs> I chose it because of ice cream. And yeah, so that's why we came, and that's not why we would return. We would return because there's a lot of stuff. If I came back here, I would get more ice cream. I wouldn't get that huge ass ice cream, but I would get some ice cream. It was really good. You know, now that I think about it, the goma is what stands out the most. Yeah, I, maybe you're right. Thinking about the goma is pretty good. And also that udon that we had for lunch. Yeah, the udon. Okay, yeah. Nakano, Nakano <laughs> did us good. I'm so just we're really of, happy. Going and reversing of everything we did, and it's just like the mochi thing and the drums and then the, all the stuff in the. I, I, it all, all lined up today? really well today. How did that so. happen? Awesome place. Yeah. I coughed really hard. I made my eyes water. Hey everyone, we have a Patreon page and we'd really like for you to check it out. It'll allow you to contribute to us and make these crazy adventures we've been going on continue and get even better. So we'd really love for you to follow the link and learn more about Patreon and us. Go for it.